Have you ever wondered how a chemical reaction throws a temper tantrum and everything ends up a mess? Today, we're going to be diving into just that. We're going to be talking about Le Chatier's principle, or as I like to call it, the drama queen of chemistry. Let's get started. So let's dive into Le Chatier's principle. This principle tells us that if we apply stress to a system at equilibrium, the system will adjust itself to counter the stress and restore balance. To understand this better, let's take a closer look at a few examples. One type of stress that we can introduce is changing the concentration of any compound involved in a reaction. For instance, if we add more of a reactant, this adjusts the equilibrium. To counter this, what happens is, is the forward reaction is going to speed up to convert the added reactants into products, re-establishing equilibrium. In this case, we would say that equilibrium has shifted to the right. Conversely, if we add more products, the equilibrium is going to shift to the left. Another example of stress is when we remove one of the components. As you can see from our example, we have an equal amount of reactants and an equal amount of products. However, if we remove a couple of those reactants, what's going to happen is, is the system is going to respond by shifting the reaction to produce more of that missing component aiming to restore balance. These adjustments illustrate how Le Chatelet's principle works to keep the system at equilibrium even when we introduce changes. Another way that we can stress out an equilibrium is by changing the temperature. To understand how temperature changes affect equilibrium, we first need to know if a reaction is exothermic or endothermic. This will tell us if a reaction releases or absorbs energy represented by delta H, the change in enthalpy. If delta H is negative, the reaction is exothermic, meaning that it releases energy. In this case, we can think of heat as a product of the reaction. If delta H is positive, then the reaction is endothermic, meaning it absorbs energy. So heat acts more like a reactant here, something the reaction needs to proceed. With this thermochemical data in mind, we can treat heat as another player in the reaction. If we increase the temperature, we essentially are adding more heat to the mix. Essentially what's going to happen is the reaction is going to shift to the opposite side to use up that extra heat and relieve the stress. If we cool things down, removing the heat, the reaction is going to shift towards the side that produces heat to restore the balance. So in essence, temperature changes can tip the equilibrium in one direction or the other, and the system will adjust by shifting to keep things balanced, just like adding or removing reactant or product. The third type of stress we can look at is changing the volume or pressure. Imagine we have an equilibrium involving gases inside of a beaker. But what happens if we reduce the volume of the beaker by pushing down on the plunger? According to Boyle's law, decreasing the volume increases pressure because the particles have less space and they collide more often with the container's sides. Now, if there's a difference in the number of particles or moles on each side of the equilibrium, the system will shift towards the side with fewer particles to reduce some of that extra pressure. In an equilibrium involving diamonic molecules on the left side and two separate atoms on the right side, the right side with those two atoms technically have twice as many moles. By shifting that equilibrium to the left, it's gonna lead the particles to combine, resulting in fewer total particles which helps lower the pressure. In contrast, if we increase the volume lowering the pressure, the equilibrium will shift towards the side with more particles to regain some of that lost pressure and balance things out. I hope that this information was helpful in understanding everything you're going to need to know when it comes to this principle. As always, if you have any additional questions, make sure that you leave them down below. I love answering your questions. Head over to nurseshungstore.com. There's a ton of additional resources in order to help you ace those science exams. And as always, I'm going to catch you in the next video. Bye!